So we know how this force equals mass times acceleration equation works. We know what this equation tells us. It tells us if we have a mass and we apply a force, we know it will cause this object to accelerate. Forces cause accelerations. For example, let's say we have a 10 kilogram mass and we know this 10 kilogram mass happens to be accelerating at two meters per second squared. If we have these conditions, we know it must be feeling a force. How do we determine exactly what force this object must be feeling? Well, again, we simply use this equation. We know the mass of the object. We know what acceleration it's experiencing. So we can determine what force it must be feeling. So we just plug in our values, 10 kilogram mass with this particular acceleration. So we know under those conditions, the only potential force it could be feeling is 20 Newton force. And this is true for any 10 kilogram mass that happens to have this particular acceleration. We know under those conditions, the only potential force it could be possibly be feeling is a net force of 20 Newtons. That's the only potential force that will cause this acceleration under this condition. So now we know. And again, forces cause accelerations. And again, let's not forget the units. We have mass times acceleration. So when you multiply those units, that gives you Newtons. But again, don't forget the big picture idea of this formula. For example, let's do another, let's do another example. So let's say we happen to have this object and let's say we know we apply a 20 Newton force. And when we apply that 20 Newton force, we have an acceleration of two meters per second squared. So we know we applied 20 Newton force and we know it happens to have this acceleration. So under those conditions, what mass does this object have? Well, the only potential mass we could have under these conditions, we know must be a 10 kilogram mass. In another example, let's say we apply 20 Newton force on this object. So let's say we know we have a 10 kilogram mass. So on that 10 kilogram mass, we apply 20 Newton force. Under those conditions, what acceleration must this object have? Well, under those conditions, we see the only potential acceleration it could have under those conditions is this two meters per second squared acceleration. So the big picture point of this formula is as long as you know two of the unknowns, you can solve for the third. So now let's, let's talk about something else. So now let's say we have this object. Let's say we happen to have this object. And let's say on this object, we apply a 20 Newton force. So we take this object and we apply 20 Newton force. What's going to happen once we apply the 20 Newton force? Well, we know forces cause accelerations. So if we apply a force, we know this is going to accelerate and it's going to start moving. So we apply the 20 Newton force and it starts moving. And let's say we apply that 20 Newton force for five meters. So originally the block was here. We applied a 20 Newton force and we kept on applying that 20 Newton force for five meters. Under those conditions, how much work have we done on this object? Well, we know the formula for work is force times distance. If you know the amount of force you applied and you know how long, how much distance you apply that force for, you can determine how much work you've done. So if we apply a 20 Newton force for five meters, we keep on applying the 20 Newton force for five whole meters. Then we know under those conditions, we've done a hundred joules of work. And essentially, don't forget the units. Remember, these were the units of Newtons. And then again, this is distance, so meters. So multiplying those, that gives you the units of joules. But this is the equation for work. And, and again, if you did 20 Newtons of force on any object for 5 meters, then under those conditions, you would always do 100 joules of work. But so let's say originally we had this situation. So we apply the 20 Newtons of force. And let's say we apply that 20 Newton of force for five meters. And let's say we did this entire process in four seconds. So we, we did this hundred joules of work, but we did this hundred joules of work in four seconds. Then under those conditions, if we did that hundred joules of work, that, that 20 Newton force for five meters. So we did that hundred joules of work in four seconds. Then under those conditions, you can determine how much power you've used. So the, using this formula, now we know we've done 20 wattage watts of power. So again, this is, the, this is power. This is how you get power. If you know how much work you've done and you know how long it, it required to do that work, you can determine the power and the, the SI units of power is wattage. So again, we saw we did 100 joules of work. We did 100 joules of work in four seconds. So again, now using this formula, just multiply, uh, dividing the work by the amount of time that gives you the, the wattage, the power. So now we know we did 25 watts of work. 
of, of power, 25 watts of power. And I know wattage gets confused with work and I, I know it's confusing, but again, so this is the formula for wattage, for power. If you know how much work you've done, and you know how long it required, you just divide those and now you have the wattage, the power, how much power you've exerted. And again, these are the SI units for power. I know it's a little complex, it takes time. But again, so we, so we know we did, a, whenever we apply 20 Newton force for five meters, we do 100 joules of work. But instead, let's say we did that same 100 joules of work in two seconds. So instead, we did that same 100 joules of work but, in, but we did, now we did that 100 joules of work in two seconds. It only required two seconds to do that 100 joules of work. Well, again, you take the amount of work you've done divided by the amount of time that gives you the power. So whenever you do 100 joules of work in two seconds, that's 25 wattage of power. So this is the equation for power. And again, it's, it's, it's not so bad. If uh, All you need to know is if you know how much work you've done, and you know how much, how long it required to do that work, you can determine the power, the wattage, and this is the formula for power. This is the formula for work. If you know the force you've applied, and you know how much distance you've applied that force for, now you know how much work you've done. And this is the equation for force. If you know the mass of an object, and you know what acceleration it's experiencing, you can determine the force that it must be feeling. So again, so, so these are the important units for physics, and I just highly recommend you, you memorize this and memorize these units for, for all, all these uh, things.